Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Maxim Burgerhout from 100 Things You Can Do with Red Hat Management Products. Um, today is part four in our series around content views and filters in Satellite 6, and we'll be looking at using a dedicated Puppet content view today. Uh, this will be the final content view related episode for a bit. Uh, we'll be looking at other Red Hat Management Products in the next um, upcoming few weeks. And um, so let's jump right in. Now, we've talked about content views in general up until now, mostly. Um, let's do a short recap about that for a bit. Um, a content view was a concept in Satellite 6 that helps you filter and version sets of RPM repositories. And Puppet modules can be part of a content view as well. Now, we haven't talked about Puppet much until now, uh, but if you add a Puppet module to a content view, Satellite creates what is called a Puppet environment from that module or from those modules you add to the content view. And a Puppet environment is a Puppet concept that is often used to bundle together and version groups of Puppet modules and then assign them to uh, groups of systems. So basically a very similar to what content views are. Uh, puppet environments are directories under slash etsy slash puppet slash environments, and you can easily check them out on disk. Uh, we'll be looking at that um, in a bit. But for now, let's let's circle back to content views uh, um, for a second. Um, if you assign a content view to a host group, Satellite automatically assigns the Puppet environment that corresponds to that content view to the host group as well. You can, however, override the Puppet environment that is assigned to the host group. In fact, you can assign any Puppet environment that is known to Satellite. That can be an environment that belongs to another content view bit. Um, another dedicated Puppet content view, for example, or it can be in a Puppet environment that you maintain outside of Satellite, though that is a bit out of scope for this screencast. Now, we'll look at the UI and do a little demo in a second, but first I want to look at why you would want to do this, or maybe not. So why or why not? Well, if you stick all of your modules in a dedicated Puppet content view, you will get much faster publishing and promotion of your, uh, your dedicated Puppet content view. So you get much faster turnaround time in, in Puppet module development. It's easy to understand why a Puppet um, content view with 40 modules in there uh, publishes and promotes much faster than a content view that also has 35,000 RPMs in there. So that might be a benefit you want to uh, make uh, use of. Another reason why you make, uh, might want to try this out is that if you maintain all of your modules in a dedicated Puppet content view, you can still share that dedicated uh, Puppet content view between various host groups by overriding the Puppet environment setting, but you only have one place where you have to maintain all of your modules. However, you do not get a relation anymore between what is version Puppet content and the version RPM content that you tested it with. So basically, you break the relation between version RPM content and version Puppet content that you would have if you would stick your Puppet modules in the same content view as your RPMs. Whether or not that is important to you, uh, you need to figure out for yourself. For some organizations, this might be important. For some organizations, it might not be. Um, but this is basically the, the list of pluses and minuses um, you would need to take a look at if you want to make a decision on which way to go here. So let's uh, switch over to my satellite server for a little demo. And there we are. So you see that I'm logged into my satellite server right now. Uh, this is the content view creation page. I'm going to create a little content view for you guys to show um, what I was talking about. I'm, I'm going to call this um, dedicated Puppet Content View Pup CV. Click Save. I'm going to add a single module to this Puppet Content View. So I'm going to add, let's say I want to uh, configure my Postfix servers that are in RHEL. So let's say I'm going to use a Postfix module. I'm going to use the Thias one. And um, what I have done now is I added this single postfix puppet module to the pup CV content view. I'm going to publish a new version of this. So I'm just going to create a new version, version um, with postfix. I'm going to save that. So what happens now in the background is Satellite is now creating this, this content view in the library. And we can now easily go to the file system and see that this um, content view has actually been created. So let me switch over to. Um, another tab that has an SSH session in there. So one second, let me switch over to my SSH session. So we are now in the directory called slash etsy slash puppet slash environments. And if I do an LS here, uh, I get that final um, directory there. So it's KP Red Hat Library Pup CV 47. So 
the name of the environment directory is made up of KT, which is um, basically uh, Cotello, Red Hat, which is my organization in satellite uh, library, which is the lifecycle environment I'm working with currently. So I only published this uh, puppet content view, so it's not in any of my other um, lifecycle environments like Devon Prod. It's only in library yet at this point. This is the name of the dedicated puppet content view for me, and this is its ID. So if I go into this directory, I get one other directory called modules, and in the modules directory, I'm sorry, uh, we get that single um, puppet uh, module I put in there, which is the, the Thias postfix uh, puppet module. Now, if I go back to my satellite server again, uh, we can create a new host group. Uh, let's call that um, PubCV as well. So let's call it PubCV. The PubCV host group is in the library environment um, because that's the only place my dedicated Puppet content view is available right now. I'm going to assign um, the RHEL 7 uh, generic composite content view for now. And you can see that Satellite automatically um, completes fills in the puppet environment that belongs to this um, composite content view, uh, CCV of RHEL 7 generic. So again, that is uh, Cotello. Red Hat is my organization, as you can see here. It's um, in this case, it's in library and it's the name of the composite content view right there in the ID. Now I can override this. That was the whole point of the demo. I can override this and I can type pubcv. This is the one we saw on disk earlier. It's KT Red Hat library pubcv47. So what I did now is I over Road overridden, I don't know the proper English there, um, the Puppet environment that will be assigned to systems in this host group with the dedicated Puppet content view I created earlier. Now, and as you saw before, uh, publishing and promotion of a dedicated Puppet content view was uh, plenty fast. So uh, that should uh, help you a lot if you have a high turnover rate, a high development rate in your Puppet modules. Um, publishing and promotion with high speed is then very valuable. Um, I think I made a slight mistake earlier when I said um, I had to put this in library because it doesn't even matter because all of the environments that are um, on my satellite server are available here. So even um, environments that are in dev or QA and prod, I could select and uh, assign that to this specific host group. Um, so let's go back to the slide deck for a short, short recap and um, some, some closing words. So um, today we took a look at how to set up a dedicated Puppet content view that should give you a little bit more speed if you re require that during your Puppet module development. Uh, slight downside there is that you break the bond between version RPM content and version Puppet content. Um, I hope this was useful. If you, if you took a look at this and you found it useful, please let me know in the comments or like this video. Uh, please also sub subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out our blog on 100things.wizard.com. And uh, we'll be back in, uh, in a week or so to talk about uh, things like uh, Ansible Tower and uh, Reddit Cloudforms. So see you then. And for now, goodbye.